Hi there, in this video we're going to be talking about the concepts of total sum of squares, the explained sum of squares and the residual sum of squares and the sort of relationship between all three of these things. So we can think about us as having some sort of data for two variables, xi and yi, where yi is the sort of thing that we are trying to explain with our model. So perhaps we have some sort of data which looks something like this. And we could think about our yi as having some sort of mean, right? So we just calculate the mean for the yi, which is we call y bar. We could think about the total amount of variance uh, in our dependent variable that we're trying to explain as being the sort of sum of all the distances of points or the vertical distances of points from y bar. When in fact, because we're going to have consider some points which are actually below the line, instead of just summing the distances, we're actually going to sum the square of the distances. So that's the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi minus y bar all squared. So this kind of represents the amount of variance in our dependent variable which we're trying to explain. So the total sum of squares is kind of the thing which we're trying to explain in our model. We're trying to explain why it is the case that our dependent variable y varies. So we might think about fitting a sort of linear model to our data, um, in which case we might fit using least squares a line that looks something like that. And for each value of xi, our model suggests a value of yi, which isn't identical to the value of yi which we have in our sample, it's the series of points which lie on our line. And we could do that for each of the points in our sample. Then it might be interesting to say, well, using our model, how much of this sort of variation of y or the points y from our sort of their average y bar is explained by our model? And we could do that by sort of summing up from i equals 1 to n our predicted values of yi minus y bar all squared. So this is what we call the explained sum of squares because this is the amount of variation in y which our model explains. In reality, it's not frequently the case that the explained sum of squares is the same as the total sum of squares. Because in order for this to be the case, I'd have to have a model which fitted through each of the points absolutely perfectly. And aside from the fact that that would probably overfit my data, um, it's very unlikely that we get that in reality. So in reality, the explained sum of squares is less than the total sum of squares. So the explained of the explained sum of squares as a ratio of the total sum of squares is somewhere less than one. So what is it that's sort of making it not exactly equal to one? Well, that's the sort of difference between our true values of y and our fitted values of y, which we can sort of illustrate on our diagram by this first point. That's sort of the distance between the point on the line and the true value, which is this sort of value at the bottom here. And we call this sum of squares, we call it the residual sum of squares because it's the sort of amount which is left over after our model has tried to explain the data. And we represent that by the sum of the true values of y minus the fitted values of y all squared. When again, we're squaring such that we get, um, we, we treat positive and negative distances equally. And actually, we won't, although we won't prove it in this video, it turns out that sort of intuitively, the total sum of squares is made up of that which is explained by your model, the explained sum of squares, plus the residual sum of squares. 